In this video, I will show you how to install the V6S chip on the OLED. Let's get started. These are the tools that I used in this video. You can get most of them from AliExpress. As for the flux, I bought it from mtechdirect.com. And for the PCB cleaner, I bought it locally. You can use different brands if you cannot find the ones I used in the video. This is the solder points map. All of them are located on the top of the board. So in this project, there is no need to take out the motherboard from the chassis. It is mandatory to check the console's health before modding it, so turn it on and see if you can boot to the home screen. Ensure that the console's firmware is compatible with the newest version of Atmosphere. And turn off the console. Now it's time to disassemble the console. Remove the microSD card and the game card if they are inside the console. I assume you all know how to disassemble the NX OLED, so I will speed up the video. Disconnect the battery. Remove the microSD card and the game card board. Remove the heatsink. Clean the CPU cover. Now we need to remove the CPU cover from the motherboard. Use a sewing or a straight pin to unlatch the mini locks. Then use a sharp tweezer at the corners to pry and remove the CPU cover. Clean the CPU from the existing thermal paste. The CLK or the D-point is hidden under the CPU frame, so we must remove it. Use a cutting plier to cut the frame carefully from end to end. In this video, I will do the kamikaze to expose the dead zero or the C-point. The location is exactly 1mm to the left of the A-point resistor and is buried 3 layers below the board surface. To do this, you need a grinder pen with a sharp drill head, steady hands, patience, and courage to avoid damaging the board. However, you can still use the dead zero adapter if you are afraid to do the kamikaze. It's a less hassle and less risky alternative. Scratch the board with the grinder pen to mark the location. To maximize visibility, wet the area with IPA before grinding. Begin the surface grinding process with precision and attention to the detail. Use the 0.2mm grinding head. Use the wipes to clear out the debris. And continue with the grinding process. You have to wet, grind, and wipe the area in cycles until you reach the target. 
You must carefully observe and count the layers while grinding the surface. I've sped up this video. It may appear that the grinding process is quick and simple, but in reality, it is slow and time-consuming. We have removed the first layer. Let's continue exposing and removing the second layer. We have removed the second layer, and by wetting the area, we can slightly see the dead zero track beneath the surface. There it is. We need to peel the brown substrate to reach the dead zero pad. Continue grinding the area to expose the pad. And there you have it. The next step is to cover the perimeter with the solder mask in order to prevent any short circuits. Cure the area with a UV lamp for several seconds. I typically let it sit for about a minute. Apply another layer of the solder mask. The dead zero point is located 3 layers below the topmost boat surface, and it is difficult to solder, even using a very sharp solder tip. So, I applied the solder paste and hit it with the hot air to resolve the problem. By the way, please remove the fan before using the hot air or you will melt it. Use a sharp tweezer to notch the solder ball carefully. Ensure it stays in place without moving or dropping. Get the 3 cm wire. I use a 36 gauge UL10064 or Teflon wire. If you don't have this kind of wire or find this cable is too bulky, you can swap it out for a 0.1 mm enamel or magnet wire. Bend the wire slightly to ensure a secure and solid connection since the dead zero point is below the board surface. Apply a small blob of flux to the dead zero point. Then solder it. Clean the area with IPA or PCB cleaner solution. And then secure the area with an adequate amount of solder mask. Light the area with the UV lamp to cure the solder mask. Now let's solder the AE or the CMD point. Take a 2cm wire and solder it to the top side of the resistor. Avoid keeping the solder tip on the resistor for too long. This can damage the resistor and result in a purple screen. To enhance visibility while exposing the buried pad, apply a blob of flux or IPA to the D-point area. Get the grinder pen and begin scratching the solder mask carefully. Thin the D-pad. Get a 3cm wire and pass it into a small opening on the CPU frame. Then solder it to the D-point. Now get another 3cm wire and solder it to the left side of the big capacitor.
And now let's expose the B or the RSD point. The principle is the same as the D point. Use a blob of flux and the grinder pen to expose the track. Then get a 2cm wire and solder it to the B point. Get the CPU FPC kit and align it to the caps. Drop a blob of flux to the solder pads. Solder the pads while holding the kit with your finger. To get a clean solder, apply flux multiple times to tidy and separate the solder blob. Clean the area with IPA or PCB cleaner. Then cover the area with the captain tape to avoid signal shorts. By the way, I chose not to solder this ground signal anchor since the shorter capacitor pads already serve as the ground signal. And it will be easier to remove this FPC kit if somehow you mess it up. Use IPA or PCB cleaner to clean the CPU cover from the existing thermal paste. Now get a bent nose plier and flip some metal locks inside, beginning from this one. Here is the next one. And here is the last one. So there are three metal locks that need to be flipped inward. This one, this one, and this one. We are done with the CPU cover. Drop a blob of fresh thermal paste to the top of the CPU. Then reinstall the CPU cover. This is the new Physics S chip, which is the Physics successor. The enhanced version not only boasts a sleeker design, but is also compatible with all console models, from the V1, the V2, the Lite, and the OLED. It provides faster training and booting compared to the previous Physics chip. Additionally, it offers the convenience of resetting or flashing the chip directly from the console's USB port. Get a double-sided tape and stick it to the back of the chip. Get the physics s chip and stick it to the top of the CPU cover. Then connect the CPU FPC kit to the physics s chip. Now let's solder the wires to the physics s chip. Begin by thinning the solder pads. And then solder the wires. Then proceed to solder the D+, D-, and the V-Bus wires. This is for resetting or flashing the chip via the console's USB port.
Before supplying power to the console, it is better to check the diode values of the solder points. Set the multimeter to the diode mode, then place the black probe on the metal surface and the red probe on the solder point. For the B point, you will see about 2.7 volts or nothing. It depends on your multimeter impedance. For the 3.3 volts, D, A, and the C point, it will read about 0.500 until 0.900 volts. Rinse all the fan if you remove it during hitting the dead zero point with the hot air rework station. Connect the battery. And press the power button. The chip will begin the training process. As soon as you see the solid green LED, turn the console over to verify if the chip logo is displayed on the screen. The next step is to press both volume buttons to see if the console can boot to the OFW. Then turn it off. Clean the existing thermal paste from the metal shield. And now we will reassemble the console. Put a fresh thermal paste to the top of the CPU cover. Then reinstall the heatsink. Reinstall the microSD and the game card board. Cover the chip with a sheet of Captain Tape. Apply a new thermal paste to the top of the heatsink. Reinstall the metal shield. Reconnect the antenna. Then reinstall the back cover. Download the latest head spec from the releases link. Backup the existing the folder to your computer. Open the head spec archive and extract it to the micro SD card. Insert the micro SD card into the console. And turn it on. The next step is to follow my setting up the SD card from scratch video. Congratulations, you have successfully modded the OLED using the Kamikaze method and utilizing the V6S chip. Thank you for watching the video.